If I was to ask you how much you think an all-in-one player should cost that can onboard analyze music, connect to the internet and stream tracks directly, connect to Dropbox, key shift, and control lights, all that, how much that should cost, what would you say? Pause the video a minute, put it down in the comments below, and let's see if you're surprised when I introduce this brand new product here. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, and today is a very, very exciting day indeed. Today, I get to introduce you to the Newmark Mixstream Pro. Now, this product really has blown my mind mainly because of the price. This isn't anything new. We've seen this technology in other devices already. However, those devices cost over double what this does. So we have a device here that retails at £499 here in the UK that has all the functionality of the class-leading Denon DJ hardware that Engine 2.0 is currently running. This is incredible. It really is. And on top of that, this thing has speakers built into it, meaning that if you're just starting out in the world of DJing, this could very well be the best product I have ever, ever seen for a beginner. So let's dive into it and take a closer look. So here it is. This is the Newmark Mixstream Pro. And as you can see, it looks like a regular Newmark Platinum FX controller. However, there's a seven inch touchscreen in the middle of it. Now this seven inch touchscreen is essentially a laptop built into the decks. This is a true all in one. There is no laptop needed at any point if you do not want to use it. Admittedly, you can use the Engine DJ software on your computer and prepare music for playback in the deck. It does have two USB slots and an SD card reader should you want to use local libraries. However, you don't need to do this you can use the power of the engine OS inside the deck instead. Now this seven inch touchscreen is how we operate with the deck. It is a multi-touch gesture based system, which means you can slide on the decks to load tracks in. We can use our fingers to use gestures to zoom in and out on the decks here. Of course, if you don't want to use the touchscreen, you can use the physical buttons down here. So we have a view button where we can quickly flick between the panels. If we press shift and view, we can get into a horizontal stacked waveform view like this. Like I say, you can just use the touchscreen instead. Of course, if you're in your library, we can use the back button to navigate through, use the browse control, which pushes in, and we can use the dedicated load buttons either side to load a track into a deck just like that. We have two other shortcut buttons on the right and left of the screen. On the right hand side, we have the uh, preferences. Now these preferences can be accessed simply by swiping down from the top of the screen. And here you access your control center. So loads of really quick, easy functions to change and quick action buttons here. Much like a control center on your phone when you swipe down and put it into flight mode, where well, we can swipe down here and we can change things like the crossfader curve, the quantize and things like that. On the left hand side we have the source button. If we press this we can see that we have the demo tracks loaded up at the moment. Now these are five tracks that are pre-installed on the deck, comes in the deck and they will be shown if no other source drives are connected. As I've previously mentioned you can connect your own libraries to this. You can load up music onto SD cards or USB sticks. There's two USB ports and an SD card reader on the back and the unit will in fact analyze these files as well. So unlike rival all-in-one units where you have to use a dedicated software on their computers to prepare drives with music before you can use them to the full potential, this device can actually analyze the music, create beat grids and recognize the BPMs directly on the deck itself, which is very, very impressive. If you are coming from another system, say you've got a record box USB stick, this unit can also convert that record box USB stick into an engine playlist. So it'll read all your playlists, all your hot cues from your record box USB stick. It's very, very powerful. But it's an all-in-one. Say you don't have a computer, what are you gonna do? Well, you can connect this device to Wi-Fi, just like this. And then we can use streaming services directly with this controller. So 
what we can do is we can head back to the sources and as you can see on the bottom we have access to Beatport Link, BeatSource Link, SoundCloud, Go Plus and Tidal as well. Now this is really, really important for all the beginners out there because in the past, traditionally, you would have had to go out, bought a laptop if you didn't have one already, bought a DJ controller, and then spent hours and hours and hours not only finding music, but also purchasing it as well. And it quickly ramps up in cost and effort. On top of that, you're gonna need some speakers. Well, thankfully, all this is contained inside the unit itself. So if I go to Beatport Link, for example, I can go in there, I can use the pre-established playlists and uh, music within Beatport Links. If I go to the views, I can just go like, let's go to a curated playlist. Let's say I want to play some bass house. And I can get the music directly from here. I can load it directly into the deck. It'll download it in full, so I won't be buffering or running up against the end of the track. It will analyze the track, as you can see. So we've got the BPM popping up there at 128. I can get the track playing and I don't even need speakers because inside this unit, we have four custom tuned speakers built in. So we've got four custom tuned speakers inside this unit. Now don't get me wrong, these are not going to blow you away. They are very, very good for practicing at home. Um, you could play to a few friends in a bedroom, but you're not going to be doing house parties just with the four speakers inside here. That said, they get plenty loud enough. They offer a well-rounded sound. There's plenty of bass that comes out of them. They're not too tinny or anything like that. And they do sound better than your laptop speakers. Now, to give you an idea of what they sound like, I'm quickly going to show you a few comparisons using the same microphone from the same distance away. And you can just hear how these sound compared. <laughs> So, apart from the speakers in here, we do have a pair of speaker connections on the back of the device itself. Now, I was concerned when I first saw this unit with its entry level price. I did think that it would just have RCA outputs, if any speaker outputs at all. I'm really glad to say that, in fact, we do have XLR outputs. So, this means that this unit can connect to professional sound systems. So this really is the ultimate beginner controller because when you've started on it, you can then continue to use this, taking it to gigs with you. And you can connect it to bigger sound systems where a lot of smaller entry level controllers fall down in that regard. You need a professional mixer to connect to professional sound systems. So that is really, really good to see. There is no booth output on this device, but again, it's 500 pound. What do you expect? It's not gonna have everything but you can use the internal speakers at the same time as the external speakers. So we could actually use these internal speakers as a pair of monitors. And you know, if you're playing a little bar or something, that would be completely acceptable. It would do the job just fine. Now, moving on to the rest of the controller itself. Up top left hand corner here, we have our volume controls and our Q split for the headphones. The headphones are in eighth inch and quarter inch jack formats. It's really nice to see the bigger uh, headphone slot being put on this device because I cannot stand the smaller version being only available on beginner controllers. Not everyone wants a cheap pair of headphones with their first set of decks. In the middle, we've got large touch sensitive uh, capacitive jog wheels. These feel the exact same as most of the other new Mark jog wheels. They're great, they respond really well. We have a really cool feature on them, which is called Smart Scratch. Now, Smart Scratch essentially is slip mode being activated on the jog wheel when you touch the top of it. This means the track will continue playing underneath, and then when you let go of your scratch action, the track will jump back to where it should be, just like slip mode. So let me show you that in action. So you can see here the track's playing underneath, and it just catches up. You can turn this off by pressing this button here. Yeah. 
You can also head into the settings of the deck and make sure that this is turned off from default when you boot the unit up, which is nice. On top of that, the uh, scratch mode button, if you hold it in, will enable you to change the beat grid of the track on the deck itself. So on here, you can see we can half the BPM. If it's got it wrong, we can double it. And we can also adjust the beat grid markers. And we can use the jog wheel to move the beat grid as well. So this really is an all-in-one unit. We do not need our laptop at any point to use the full functionality of this device. Below the jog wheel and the scratch mode, we've got our traditional sync buttons, of course, for syncing up. If you don't want to beat match, this will match the tempo and the beat grids. We've got Q, play button, shift button, which will access secondary functions on the controller itself. We've got four performance pads, but these are secondary layer pads. So, if we use the hot cues and we go through and set hot cues and we've set all four, don't worry, we can press Q again, it will start flashing, and now we can set up to eight hot cues. And this works throughout the performance um, pads. So we've got Q, we've got saved loop. A saved loop essentially allows you to set a loop manually. So you press it once for in, press it again for out, and then you have that loop. You can exit it at any point, but if you want to jump back in, you can just press the pad again. To delete that loop, press shift, and then you go, you're out of that loop. We've got auto loops. Auto loops are great, they respond to the beat grid. So again, we've got a 32. It's shown on screen what these uh, divisions are. 16, eight, four, tap it again. Two, one, half, and quarter. Moving on, we've got a roll functionality. Again, on the bottom of the screen, you can see here what the pad divisions are. So we've got a triplet, a quarter, a quarter triplet, an eight. Press the roll button again. We've got a two beat, a single beat, a triplet, and a half beat. Next to the performance pads, we have pitch bend buttons. Now, if you press shift and, you, and use these buttons, it will change the uh, pitch range of the rather small pitch fader here. Alternatively, rather than using the outside of the jog wheel to pitch bend your track, you can use the dedicated buttons here. Something that a lot of beginners prefer to do to avoid accidentally touching the top of the jog wheel. Moving on to the mixer section in the middle, we've got a full three band EQ with dedicated trim level. Now, I was a bit torn at first whether I liked the fact that the filter knob, the high pass, low pass filter has been put up top. But the more I think about it, the more I think this is the correct decision. Keeping the three band EQ and dedicated trim knob in a line in a row will get beginner DJs used to how it is on professional DJ mixers. So I have, at first I was torn whether the trim knob should be up here and put the gain at the bottom, move everything up. But no, I do think this is the correct decision. So we have a full three band EQ in here. This can be changed between isolator and EQ inside the settings and the resonance of the filter can be changed as well within the settings, which is great because from default, this is quite a lot of resonance on this filter. So of course, high pass filter to the right, low pass filter to the left, individual gain control, treble, mid, and bass. Traditional three band EQ there, so that's really, really useful. The up faders have plenty of length to them. They're not the nicest feeling up faders in the world, but again, at this price, who can complain? And the crossfader, although it feels a bit cheap, actually has quite a decent cut in, so it's not the worst crossfader I have ever felt. Moving on to the effects in the middle. Now the effects are using a paddle control. This means we can hold the effect on by pushing up or we can pull the sprung loaded paddles towards us for a momentary effect. The effects are where this controller lets itself down a little bit. If I had anything to complain about, it would be the effects. And the reason for that being is that we cannot change any parameters with these effects. We cannot control how uh, much effect is applied, how the wet and dry value, we cannot change the beat value. We are locked to what they have given us. And I hope to see in a future update that we'll be able to access these parameters within the settings. I'm sure they probably have the capability to do that. But as it stands, 
we have an echo at one beat. All these work post fader, as you can see. We have a delay at one beat. We have a flanger, which is at four beats. And we have a phaser, which again is locked to four beats. Now, these sound okay. I like the fact the post fader, but I would have really liked to have changed those parameters in there. Personally for me, I don't use a one beat delay. I want a half a beat delay. I want a half a beat echo, and I certainly will never use a four beat flanger. I want it to be eight beats. So that is a bit of a downside to this controller, but given its price, it's really cool to see paddles here. Paddles are used by professional high-end scratch mixers. You don't usually find them on entry-level units, and I believe this is the first all-in-one unit to ever use paddles as well. So having them there is really cool. Around the front of the unit, we do have a microphone input. It's a quarter-inch TRS connection, and it has a dedicated gain control on the right-hand side. It's not the greatest sounding thing in the world ever, but again, it's just really nice to be able to have that functionality. On top of this, in the settings, we can turn off the microphone coming out of the main speakers in the unit itself, which is great to avoid feedback. So there we have it. That is everything inside the new Mapmix Stream Pro. Now, this is made out of plastic. It feels quite light, to be honest. It feels like, you know, you could easily take this in a backpack and take it to your friends for a house party, something like that. I would recommend getting a deck saver just to protect that screen and some of the uh, knobs. Then They feel solid, but they feel cheap at the same time, if that makes sense. Like I say, it is made out of plastic, which keeps the weight down, but it is reassuringly sturdy. There's a lot of, like, bulk to it. Around the front, the speaker grills are made out of metal, which is nice to see. That will just add that, add a bit of protection to those speakers. None of it rattles with the speakers turned up. There's no buzzers, no hums, no unwanted vibrations. For £500, this is a very well-built unit indeed. Now we've covered all of the external features out here. Let's just have a quick overview of what Engine 2.0 is capable of. So, of course, we can go in, we can stream from all of these sources. Beatport, BeatSource, SoundCloud, Tidal, all these places. We can plug in USB sticks. Now these can be hard drives, these can be traditional USB sticks, they can be SD cards in fact, and they can be running either a record box collection, they can be running an engine DJ collection which is preferable, or even nothing at all. They can just be MP3 files or WAV files put on a USB stick because we have the ability to analyze the music from within here. Now, if we head into the settings here, we can see what else is capable of this unit. We can record back to our USB sticks or SD cards. So we can record our sets on here. Do note, you're not allowed to record um, streaming tracks. So if you are using Beatport or BeatSource Link, you won't be able to um, record that set. But on the right side, you may have noticed something rather special indeed, lighting. This little unit at £500 contains engine lighting. So we can connect to Philips Hue wireless lights over the Wi-Fi, or in fact, we can connect the SoundSwitch micro DMX connection and use this in professional mode, just like we recently showed on the Denon DJ Prime 4. If you've not seen the engine lighting video and guide, please do go check it out in the top right corner. It's incredibly advanced, and I am amazed to see such a beginner level unit have this functionality inside. Now, it's not just lighting that has me amazed that it's in here. Just like all the other Engine 2.0 um, units, this has the access and the ability to connect to Ableton Link. So we can sync this up with external instruments, with other DJs using Rekordbox or Serato DJ Pro. It's just another example of extremely advanced features, which for some reason are still in here. Now, I would have thought that the guys at Engine would have disabled a few of these options because it's such a cheaper unit, but no, it's all in here. So you basically have the functionality of a Denon DJ Prime 2 or a Denon DJ Prime Go, but inside a Mixstream Pro, which is half the price. Now, don't get me wrong, the build quality is a lot less than those other devices, and not everything is perfect on here. You know, I would have loved to have seen a loop encoder on this unit uh, so we can move those loops. Talking of moving music, there is no beat jump functionality on the Mixstream Pro, which is a massive shame. And again, 
of course we can't edit those effects we can't change them however all that said for the price this is my dj products of the year hands down i can't get around how they've made this for 500 pounds if you're in the market for a beginner level controller and you're looking at the 300 pound mark save up a little bit more just save up a little bit more it's as simple as that that is my advice from now on because you're going to spend that on a laptop I mean, a lot of people might have a laptop already, but when you consider the fact you don't need a computer at all for this device, or speakers for that matter, it is an utter bargain. It really, really is. Those are my thoughts on the Mixstream Pro. I'm blown away by it. I really am. I think it's an incredible piece of equipment for the money, and to say it's got all those features from Engine 2.0 just sitting there, ready for you as you advance in your DJ career, it's just incredible. You can literally run a full light show and use the speakers built in it is the bedroom dj's dream come true it really is but those are my thoughts what are yours let us know in the comments below i'm looking forward to seeing how much you guys thought this thing should cost to check out our performance video on it make sure you click the video down there in the bottom right hand corner take care wherever you are and i'll see you in another video sometime soon take care